Welcome back to Anime Rambles. I'm Bottle Cap. This is Anime Rambles. And today we're going to be talking about why I dropped Akudama Drive. So we're going to be sipping some tea and talking about some pros and cons. Before we get into anything, first I want to say that when I started watching this show, I started watching it seasonally. And yeah, I enjoyed it as it was coming out. It was pretty good. But there were a few problems that kept creeping up, and they were never addressed in the show. And it became uh, not uninteresting, but I didn't have any emotional stake in what was going on. Um, to put that in perspective, like uh, the animation is really good. I thought the characters were, they were all fun. They weren't interesting. They were fun characters. And I thought the overall story was interesting enough however i'm gonna show you my biggest problem with the show now so this is the wiki for the show and this is the cast yeah uh those are the character names the main character of the show is called ordinary person yeah so you have ordinary person Courier, brawler, hacker, doctor, hoodlum, cutthroat, black cat, sister, uh, execution division master, execution division apprentice, boss, execution division junior. These are character names. These aren't titles. These are what the characters are called in the show. Yeah, uh, they have as much depth as a puddle. <laughs> Why this show really didn't interest me after a certain point was all the characters were really fun episode one rocks around and you have uh the brawler take out like a hundred police robots you have the doctor on the train uh someone like gets a heart attack and she fixes their heart attack and she also um uh, kills everyone else on the train as she does the surgery and they all do crazy stuff and they're all impressive characters but when it comes to personality-wise, they are about as shallow as it comes. They're not very interesting per people. Ordinary person? She's ordinary. Courier? He's edgy. Brawler? Oh, he's overly excited and he likes to punch things. Hacker? He's a hacker. They're, they have no depth to their character. At all. At all. Like, ordinary person doesn't really think about what she's doing because she she doesn't have to deal with the moral ramifications because at the end of the day, it's all about survival. If you haven't seen the show, uh, I highly suggest uh, checking it out, at least the first couple of episodes. See if you like it. See if you have a differing opinion. But this is my take on it. And it's okay if you have a different take, but this is just how I feel. And if you have a difference in opinion or uh, something to add, feel free to leave it in the comments. But all the characters seem to be paper thin. Paper thin. And it's okay. Like, in a show where, like, you just introduce a huge group of characters and you have to roll with it, typically there's some problems with that. I'm going to show how a show went in a different direction and became a great show and with great characters. And I'm going to show how a show can use this formula, introducing a bunch of characters at the same time, and still go in the right direction. So the shows I'm going to be comparing this to are One Piece and uh, The Great Pretender. So One Piece does something completely different. It introduces one character at a time, and it slowly brings in new characters, fleshing them out as they come. You start out with Luffy, you learn that Luffy wants to be the king of the pirates, and he basically becomes a catalyst for the story. None of these characters are really catalysts. They're being pushed by the plot. They have no desire to do this. They're being forced to do this, and other, the ones that aren't being forced are being paid. So their, their motive is monetary. It's paper thin. They're not doing this because uh, their father was killed or they have a dream they want to achieve. They're just doing it for money. And that can lead to some interesting things as well, but only when you vary up the motive. If your motive is just to survive or you're being forced to, it's not that interesting. And it started getting interesting around the point where I dropped it, but it didn't 
get interesting enough plot wise in order for the because the, the characters weren't carrying the story up until that point just the animation the fight scenes were and it gets up to this point where if you don't care about any of the characters why does it matter if a character dies or does something cool or survives or achieves something if the character has no motive or, or value besides being a comedy or, or being cool. It, it doesn't hold your attention. And if your character doesn't hold your attention, they aren't a well-written character. Like, it didn't feel like any of the characters had any moral uh, uh, quandaries or anything that, any reasons why they needed money to do what they wanted to do. They were simply just murderers or they wanted to be uh, the most badass or they just wanted money to get this. They, they didn't seem any deeper than that. In One Piece, all the characters are slowly introduced. They all have their own dreams. They all have their own goals. They all have their moral codes that make them interesting when they clash against each other. The group chemistry, there was nothing. The best character was Hoodlum, and I can't believe he has no actual name. But Hoodlum was just a random dude who got dragged into this, and he was a criminal, but he had low scale, so he, he kept on lying and making stuff up, and he bounced against Brawler pretty well. And he was the only character that had any kind of chemistry with the rest of the cast. And it was fun watching those interactions, but at the same time, because he was just lying, he was just bullshitting his entire way. And it made him interesting, because he was kind of like into like this whole like crime thing, but he clearly couldn't back it up. So there's a, his character thing, uh, his character traits, and his character was that he was inept, but he wanted to be part of what was going on. And that's interesting. But all the other characters were just so supremely badass, it didn't matter. Uh, the other show I wanted to compare this to was uh, The Great Pretender. Now, The Great Pretender, it starts out with your boy, uh, Edamura, or Edamame, <laughs> and he gets introduced to this whole group of con artists. And there's like mm, five, six different people who are like really important in the story. And it doesn't elaborate all of them all at once, but every arc focuses on one member of the cons. Uh, and it elaborates on their backstory, why they're there. All the characters, none of them are there for strictly comedic values. They all have a purpose. There's always a reason why they're there. They're not there just to get money. They're there because their moral code tells them to be there, to do this. There's a reason why they're stealing from these specific people. They're not just doing everything for money. And then it slowly unfolds, un unravels these complicated characters in these arcs that are dedicated to them in order to show you that they are fleshed out people. Akudama Drive never does that. It never even reveals their names. How am I supposed to care about ordinary person? Why should I care if Courier dies? He's edgy. That's it. That's all I know. There's no depth to the characters. You don't care in movies when Indiana Jones kicks random dude number five out of a truck because random dude number five doesn't have any character besides, oh, I'm trying to attack Indy. It's the same thing with Akudama Drive, and that is why I dropped the show. At the end of the day, if you have a weak plot, which it didn't, it had a, a fairly strong plot, but its characters couldn't carry the show to the point where the plot started getting good. To summarize the plot, uh, they lived in this place that's post-war, and basically it said, uh, everything's better at this side of the train station, but there's no one that rides the train to uh, this other place. And if it's supposed to be like this world cut off from their own. And... That's all I know, because that's all the characters could carry me into. And I have no urge learning about what the characters are going to do when they get to this other side, because Hoodlum, Doctor, Brawler, Courier, and Cutthroat don't matter even a little bit. It was a cool premise, but it didn't elaborate on a single character. Not even one. Even if it just uh, uh, elaborated on ordinary person, which I feel like it should it would have made the show about nine times better. 
But if you don't elaborate on any single people, why would the plot, why would anything else matter? Like, if you think about uh, Demon Slayer, you have Tanjiro and Nezuko. You care about these people. You know the tragedy that they went through. They have comedic value. They're fun to watch. But you know why they're there. You have emotional stake in Nezuko not being hunted by the, the demon corpse. You have emotional stake in Tanjiro being able to achieve his uh, dream of uh, turning his sister back. You have emotional stake in why Zenitsu is a coward and why he's trying to push past it. These characters mean something to you because you know why they're there, what they went through, and what they're putting on the line in order to achieve their goals. But in Akudama Drive, there is none of that. So even if like uh, Muzan is a cool villain and he's doing interesting stuff uh, to try to change the world and trying to look for like the ultimate demon or whatever he's doing, uh, it doesn't matter because the character's trying to stop him are paper thin. But because the characters are strong, even parts where the plot isn't that great, the characters will push you through it. That's why Bleach is so good. Bleach's biggest problem is too many good characters. The plot of Bleach is very loosey-goosey. It's long and stretched out. But all the fights in between these characters that are so interesting carry the show. No good characters, no one to relate to, well, you can relate to ordinary person because she's an ordinary person. But if she doesn't have depth, you don't care if she lives or dies. You don't know the strife she went through or what she's fighting to protect. Why her life means something. It, it's, it's just, it's lacking. And that is why I dropped Akudama Drive. I will probably never get back to it. I thought its opening was eh. But... These are just my thoughts on the matter. If you have a differing opinion, leave it down in the comments. If you like the video, hit like. If you dislike the video, hit dislike. If you want to see more anime rambles like this, uh, subscribe. And I hope everyone has a good day. See y'all next time.